there's no more need to dump data into an S3 bucket. Stop writing that complex boilerplate code. Yeah, you can get all of that data you need for your Amazon Bedrock knowledge base with the four new connectors we have released. Yes, we've released four new connectors, connectors in preview that can get the data you need to that knowledge base. So we have the web crawler, we have uh, the ability to get data from Confluence, SharePoint, and yes, Salesforce. Retrieval augmented generation, more commonly known as RAG, is a very important technique in natural language processing, as it gives you the ability to combine data retrieval and language generation to create more accurate, more controllable, controllable and AI systems that are kind of more tailored to the data you own, or even, even use the data that was not available during the training of the model. With all that being said, let's cut over to the studio as I show you how to set up a knowledge base and these four new connectors that you can use with Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Base. And welcome to the studio. Okay, let's now check out Bedrock Knowledge Bases and how you can actually have these new connectors set up. So what I'm gonna do here inside of Bedrock Console, you're gonna click this little hamburger button here, go to Knowledge Bases, and this is where you can set up a knowledge base. We're gonna create a new knowledge base in this case, and we're gonna be connecting these, at least a couple of these new um, um, sources, data sources you, you can use right now. We're gonna give this thing a name. And that name is gonna be, let's call it, hello YouTube KB, right? Just a knowledge base. Uh, we're gonna create this as a, as a service role here. That's gonna be fine. We're gonna do some modifications later on, but we're gonna be selecting web crawler as the data source, right? So when we click next, we're gonna create the web crawler uh, data source. This is where it's gonna be getting the data from. We're gonna call it, um, data from the web. Okay, awesome. Now you can, you can give it a couple of source URLs here. I'm gonna do it for my website. Um, so like that. Basically what it's gonna do here, it's gonna go and scrape my website for data. Now you can add up to 10 different URLs in this case. We're gonna stick to one just now and leave it at that. There are a couple of settings you can do here when it comes to the sync scope of, 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 of this data source basically. Are you gonna, um, how, how are you gonna limit the scraping, right? When it comes to domains, names, and, and like all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna leave it at default, this is gonna be fine. And also I'm gonna leave it at 300 URLs a minute. This is important. You should not bombard websites with too many requests. Remember, only scrape the websites you can scrape, right? Not all of them have in their terms of service that you should do this. Leave it here at default. And also, you can also define some include and exclude patterns. This can be very powerful if you're trying to scrape some website that's rather big, but you'll want to avoid specific uh, paths that you don't really care for. In my in my case, I don't have to leave, I don't have to do anything. Just leave it at default, and this is going to be fine. Chunking, I'm going to leave as default. You don't have to worry about this right now. The default will work for our use case. Click next. Uh, I'm going to choose an embeddings model. Now, in this case, this is the model that's going to basically take this data from our website and store it in a vector, vector database of our choice. Well, it's going to create the uh, it's going to create the embeddings that are going to be stored in our vector database. I'm going to choose Cohere English here. That's fine. And when it comes to the database, there's a couple of options here. You can bring your own database, like you can you can select something like uh, your open search, Aurora, MongoDB, Pinecone, or even Redis. However, I'm going to give you a quick create. What this is gonna do, it is gonna create a open search serverless vector store. This is really great for like development. It's not really intended for production, but for our use case, it's super simple to set up, relatively cheap and kind of quick to get down. Okay, click next. And just like that, create knowledge base. This will take a while. When I say a while, I mean a couple of minutes. It's spinning up, it's spinning up the, the open search serverless and all those fun things. So we're gonna, we're gonna jump forward while it's done. And just like that, we're done. So the, the knowledge base has been created. We can basically start using it. Or can we? We can. We actually have to sync this data source. Basically, we need to run the sync so it actually goes ahead, goes ahead and scrapes the data from the web website. I'm gonna click the sync button and we'll be back here once it is done. And would you look at that? Just like that, it's done. How fast was that? It actually did take a few minutes. Um, 
again, for you, it may depend depending on what your data source is. So as you can see here, it is synced. The last sync was 21st of July today. So what I'm gonna do here is select the model, which basically you're actually pointing it to a model. So I'm gonna use claw 3 sonnet and I'm gonna ask it a question. Now, I'm gonna ask it a question that only this blog should kind of know, right? So I have a blog post that talks about how do I focus, right? So what if I give it a question, how does Darko focus? How does it know who Darko is, right? So what it's gonna do here is actually gonna retrieve the data from the knowledge base from my blog post and actually get this thing. And it says, according to Darko's blog post, he struggles with focusing on works sometimes like we all do, right? But it gives you the details. Here's the chunk of data it gets. This one, this one, a bunch of different chunks from my blog to actually give me this kind of an answer, which is really, really cool. I can ask it also something different, like, okay, let's do something like, um, what is lol banner? It's a post I wrote about lol banner. Lol banner is not a real thing. It's a thing that I've made up, but it has a post on that. So it should basically tell me, be able to tell me what is lol banner, again, with links to my existing. There you go. It's a combination of two command line tools, Figlet and lolcat. There you go. Again, source details, gets me these chunks. And if you actually look into my blog post and you see here, I think it's somewhere on the second page, you will see lol banner. That it is. So it took this data, made it into an actual result. Excellent. What about other connectors like Confluence, SharePoint, Salesforce? Well, I'm gonna give you an example how, I, how you can connect this to Confluence specifically. Um, I have a Confluence page set up, so I'm gonna give you access, uh, I'm gonna give you the, the details how you can do this. You go to add, you're adding basically a new data source inside of your knowledge base. I'm gonna select Confluence, click Next, and give it something like Darko's Confluence, right? Um, I'm using Confluence Cloud. Basically, I'm gonna be pointing it to my Confluence page. I'm gonna do this thing like that, select my URL, Darko team at and I'm gonna also tell it to use basic authentication because it needs to use authentication. Otherwise, it won't be able to do it. So what you need is a username, it's usually an email, and an API token key, which you can get through Confluence. You need to store those two things on AWS Secrets Manager. It is important that you do it like so. So you need to go ahead and create a secret that is titled Amazon Bedrock Dash. It has to have this specific name format for this thing to work. Also, inside of that secret, I'm actually gonna show this to you. Inside of that secret, you need to create a very specific um, specific way of, uh, well, you, you need a very specific format. You're gonna be using a key value store and the key value store has to look something like this, right? Username and password. So the username is gonna be your email address and the password is gonna be your token. That is how you have to keep it there, right? In plain text, it's something like this. So when you create these two things in Secrets Manager, it is very important that you name them something called Amazon Bedrock Dash, and then whatever you want. Step number two. Um, this is something you're gonna have to do in a moment, but once you add this specific ARN of this secret here, like that, um, you can leave everything uh, as default, which I'm gonna do here. Chunking is the same thing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Click Add Data Source. The data source has been added. We have Confluence now on our knowledge base. However, there's one more step we need to do here is we need to update the permissions of this specific service role. Because what you need to do right now is you need to give this specific role permissions to read the secrets manager secret, right? Otherwise it can't do it. So what you're gonna do is click here, go to IAM and attach a policy to this specific role. So. What you're gonna do here is add permissions, attach policies. You can do something like secrets, manager, read, write. I would actually suggest that you do a specific read policy in this case to only a specific uh, specific uh, knowledge, or sorry, to a specific secret. Do not do a broad thing like this. Add a specific um, uh, policy that only gives you access to this, to this specific secret. Click add permissions and just like that, your bedrock knowledge base now has the ability to access that secret. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into my data source, 
look at the first one, which is my Confluent data source, as you can see here, I'm gonna click Sync. What this is gonna do right now, it is gonna go ahead and run the sync from Confluent uh, by using the same things as before. So we'll be back for you in a, in a second, for me in a couple of minutes. Okay, it is set up right now. I wanna show you just one neat little thing. So if you go to my Confluence page here, uh, what you will see is like a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of notes, like I did, like how to install Gen2 Linux, doesn't matter. But I can ask it specific questions, right? I can do say, um, uh, let's do it like this. Um, how do I start SSH, right? It should be able to pull that information from the data from Confluence, right? You can start, it basically tells you in it as in the, again, source details, the same exam, uh, same example as before, gets you data from here. And I think there's an example, there you go, how to enable SSH. One more thing, it can also get an Excel file. So I have an Excel file attached into a, into a page called expenses and I can, I, I can open it and you will see here, there's a bunch of meals and some spend. I can ask it how many meals did I have? So if I come here and do something like, how many meals did I have? Uh, did I have in the expense sheet? Let's see if this works. Because it also takes care of those things. That's a date, that's a file type it can process. According to the expense sheet uh, in the search results, source number three, total number of meals is 37, which is absolutely correct. And just like that, you have access to your data in Confluence. Imagine that being a wiki or a team collaboration space, you can have all of that data available to you in this knowledge base and you can ask, interact with it through a chatbot. But wait, wait, not everything is in the console. Something we can do with an SDK. Yeah, absolutely the SDK. So um, let's, let's, let's see what Darko has to say about setting up and using a knowledge base using the Python SDK and how does that actually look like for you all. But how about doing this using the SDK, right? One thing is to use the console here, but the way you actually use this is through the SDK. I'm gonna show you an example how you can interact with this tool using the Bodo3 SDK, Python, and basically the command line to, to query your knowledge base. So let's have a, have a look at that. Um, I will open up VS Code here and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file and I'm gonna call it um, hello.py, right? Or uh, kb.py, right? kb.py, nice. I'm gonna save it here, boom, like that, awesome. So we have a knowledge base here and uh, we are ready to work. I'm gonna actually do the following. I'm gonna ask Amazon Q to help me write this code. It should be relatively simple. Go to Amazon Q, new tab, and I'm gonna give it this wonderful um, prompt. So, uh, I need a query, I need to query Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases with Python. Give me the basic code that does this in Python. Hit enter and let's see what happens. I think it should be able to give me the correct code. Okay, nice. I see it does a couple of things. I'm gonna copy, uh, paste, and let's see what it has done here. So imports Boto3, uh, sets up this correct uh, thing, okay. Uh, the config is knowledge base ID and model ARN, okay. It has a question, we're gonna change the question here. And awesome, as you can see here, it uh, gets us all of the stuff that we need to know. Also, wonderfully wonderfully commented code. I do like that. Okay, so we need knowledge base ID. I'm gonna move that to here. Knowledge base ID is this thing. I'm gonna scroll. Awesome, we're ready. Now let's ask it a question. So let's do the, the question we asked initially. Um, how does Darko focus, right? So we're gonna basically be sending that question over to our knowledge base and we're gonna print the response, which is output text in this case. Save this, go back to here and then let's do python3 uh, kb.py. Yes, source. <laughs> uh, source van bin activate. Let's do this thing and let's run this application. Python 3kbpy. Boom. No, no. <sighs> oh. Delete one thing. Once, once again. Now, session ID is not necessarily important. It was just there as part of the whole thing. Look at that. According to Darko's blog post, he shares a few different, it basically got us that thing. Now, you can also use the SDK to get the, the, the sources, all of those things, but in this case, we're just 
asking it to produce an answer based off of that. If we go back here and ask it a question, something else like, let's say, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. we can do, uh, how to enable SSH and save back, ask it a question. In a second, we should be able to get a look at that. Glorious, wonderful, getting the data that we actually need. All right, let's go back to Beach Darko. Using RAG is one of those key things you need to do for building good AI systems. Um, and getting data to that RAG is kind of important. Um, not, and now, thanks to these new connectors, you can get that data, well, almost no matter where it is. If you found this useful, if you found this interesting, is the, if these connectors actually can bring you some value, go check them out. They're easy to set up, they're easy to tear down, and yeah, play around with them. Tell me what you think down in the comments. And if you missed any of the links today, they're gonna be all down below the like button in the description. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being part of this Darko on the Beach Explains Retrieval Augmented Generation, I guess. Um, and I'll see you next time.